Hello, Schmoville. How's it going? JTE here. All right, guys. So I'm here to announce a brand new podcast brought to you by me, JTE. As you can see, the title is called JTE Movie Thinks. It's a pretty clever little title, I thought. It kind of tells you how I mispronounce things and lets you know we're actually talking about movies on this thing. But let me break let me break down how this podcast is going to go. First of all, this is not your like one hour, two hour podcast. This is a 15 to 20 minutes and it will not be just me talking because, uh, I mean, even I would get bored of that. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get somebody from the Schmo's crew or somebody that's on the network, you know, a friend of the show. I'm going to sit him down and I'm going to say, what is the last movie you watched? Now, that could be Netflix, Amazon Prime, iTunes, even in a the theater. Maybe they just saw something in the theater the night before. So... The show is not really dictated by me because I don't know what the movie this person watched before I sat down with them. But I think that's going to cause some really good, interesting like movie talk about movies that, you know, so let's say I'm talking to McCougan. He just watched Major League. We'll start talking about Major League and we'll start talking about Charlie Sheen and Tom Berenger and how awesome they were in like Platoon. So the conversation could really go anywhere. And I think it'll be a cool way for you guys to really talk about some older films and not just the stuff that's coming out in theaters. I mean, the Schmoes have that covered anyway. So I think it's going to be a really cool podcast. I'm really excited to bring this to you guys. You now, being Josh the Engineer, uh, I don't always get a chance to jump on the mic because I'm busy running the shows. So this is a little bit, it'll be a chance for me to get my voice out there and get my thoughts on some movies that I can't always bring up when, you know, we've got a full show. And Box Office Breakdown, which is my other show, which I love doing on the Popcorn Talk Network, uh, we just break down numbers. And, you know, I do get into movies a little bit here and there, but this is really going to be a fun place to just talk movies and how much we love them and how ridiculous and awesome they could be. And I'm really excited to get on some of the crew. Uh, you'll definitely see a lot of Copster, Cody. Uh, Finstock will be a pretty regular guest, but I'm also going to, you know, get the big guys, Harloff. I'm going to get Ellis on here once <laughs> when they're not busy and they, you know, they have time to help me out. Uh, but the rest of the crew, I can't wait to get Alicia and talk about some older films. She's always doing stuff for profiles, so she, that's going to be some really interesting episodes. Uh, I'm looking to release one of these maybe once or twice a week, depending on you know how, how often I get somebody to sit down and talk to me. Uh, and again, these things are going to be pretty short, 15 to 20 minutes long. So they're not going to be you know an hour and two hour podcast. I'm trying to keep these uh, little mini podcasts short and sweet so you can listen to you know, while you're on your drive to work or on your way home. And uh, yeah, that's it, guys. I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, I got a microphone. I hope the quality is pretty good. I actually, let me give a shout out to Miss Movies. Um, she helped me. She gave me this mic because she kind of retired from the podcast game. And you know who? You know what? I will have Miss Movies on this podcast at one point. Uh, so, and I also wants to give a special thanks if you're listening on iTunes or Pod Podomatic. The logos I have for this show, JT Movie Thinks, is all brought to you by the queen of Photoshop, Leanne. Uh, thank you very much, Leanne. This is awesome. I love it how it has like a very patriotic vibe to it. Ah, oh, man, it's going to be exciting. All right, guys. Well, this is the announcement episode. Uh, next time you'll see one of these, it'll be with uh, one of my fellow crew members. It's exciting for me because I don't know what the movie's going to be. But listen, I know I've seen just about every movie. I know a lot about movies, so... I get, I can roll. And you know, maybe I'll talk about some movies I haven't seen yet, which would be really interesting. And don't worry, I always warn you guys about spoilers and stuff like that. All right, while well, I'm rambling here, uh, let's go get ready for some podcasting. All right, guys, peace. You're listening to JTE Movie Thinks. Is that is that the title? Is that is that correct grammar? All right, we'll go with it. It's a show about movies and thinking. And now, here's your host, every man's hero, J.T.E. Hey, what's going on, Schmoville? That's right, J.T.E. here with the very first episode of J.T.E. Movie Thinks. And who better than the man who's responsible for bringing me into Schmoville, the guy I met right outside the Grove in Hollywood, mm -hmm. Mr. Ken Knapsack. Am I really the best... <laughs> Guest for uh, no, a movie podcast? <laughs> You're going to be one of the most interesting. Okay. You know why? Because in this podcast, guys, this is what I do. I, I mentioned this announcement trailer. I am going to ask every one of my guests, what is the last movie they watched? Not theater. It could be anywhere. Mm -hmm. At home. Maybe you're on a plane coming back from a gig, Mr. Ellis. Mm -hmm. Maybe you see something, you know, and you're in a taxi and you're on an iPad and you're watching a movie. 
I want to see what's the last movie you saw, and let's just let's just talk about it and see where it takes us. I don't know what the movie's going to be, especially that. with uh, you, Ken, because it could be yeah. Lord of the Rings for the hundredth time, <laughs> or it could be you know Meet the Freedmans. I have no idea what's going to come the, out here. The hell is Meet the Freedmans? It's a very messed up movie <laughs> documentary. Okay. But, um, I, you know, I think I'm the first guest because I was the one giving you a ride home today. That might <laughs> that could be a small portion of why it could, it could have been you. Yeah. I mean, uh, but I'm honored. But this microphone looks very familiar. Yes, I I said this on the uh, original announcement. Mm-hmm. Uh, thanks to Miss Movies, mm-hmm. this podcast is possible because <laughs> I can't afford to buy a mic right now. <laughs> and, I mean, not a good one. Yeah. And, uh, Miss Movies, who retired, you know. Which is a shame. Which is a shame. And Miss Movies, I know you're listening, and you should break out. You should steal this microphone back from JTE <laughs> and do your own podcast. I will have her on here. Eventually, I t- I said that when I originally announced. I said I am going to have Miss Movies on the show because she it. watches a lot of movies. You know, she's pr- great. It'd probably be a Disney movie because you know she's probably. busy with the kids. Busy with the kids, uh, and I love this format. This is like a long form improv movie <laughs> podcast, and uh, and you you are going to have no idea. You have no idea what we're about to talk about, and I love that. Yeah, and, which for me, it's the exciting thing. I'm going by the fact that I've seen most movies. Yeah. And if even if I haven't seen it, I at least know a little bit about you, it. I'm going to tell you, if you have seen this or you know of it, I'd be – that'd be awesome. That'd, I, you'd, okay. win a, you'd win a prize. I don't know what uh, that prize is, but you'd win maybe another free – Ride home? Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Hey, tell you what, I, I'll make a deal because we're at my uh, Knapsack Files studios in yep. Studio City, California. Beautiful, sexy, steamy Studio City, California. If you have seen this movie, mm-hmm. I will drive you all the way back to your door. <laughs> All right, I'm hoping I you see this You have to be movie. honest. I will be honest. You have to be honest. Because... Your, your reaction will tell. All right, so let's do this. Let's okay. do the very first Here's JT movie. Yeah, piece. now, if you know, I don't see a lot of movies. That's the running <laughs> joke on Schmoes now, but it's also... It it's, was a joke. It, now it's just... It, it, now it's, it's a thing. for me. It's sad. <laughs> but I do see movies, and I do see a lot of things, and, and I see a lot of documentaries. If you yeah. had, if we had done this podcast two weeks ago, uh, I would have seen we we talk about the documentary Los Angeles as a character. I believe that's the title. It's a great weird three hour documentary. It's a different mm-hmm. documentary about Los Angeles in film. Okay, you should see it if you yeah, haven't. Yeah, sounds really good. If we did this two weeks ago, <laughs> okay. and Alicia Malone, I hope you're listening. If we did this two weeks ago, we'd be talking about Amelie. Oh, great movie. I love Amelie. It's one of my favorites. I haven't seen it in about four years. I had loaned the DVD out to someone, and okay. finally, finally they returned it, it having yep. never watched it. And That's kind of like when I let a friend borrow Gremlins. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Except for I think your friend actually watched the movie. Um, <laughs> so we're not talking about Gremlins. No, it's not Gremlins. <laughs> okay. Um, no, no I, lo- I, but I, loaned, I loaned my friend Amelie, and she okay. didn't watch it. So I got it back. So last week, I put in Amelie again, or two weeks ago. Watched it for the first time in four years, and gosh, I love, I love Amelie and I love Audrey Tato, and so uh, my heart beats for that movie. And I know Alicia Malone's a big fan of that movie too. Um, but what we're going to be talking about today is a 2013 movie. Okay, it's a recent movie. Okay, right? don't don't look I'm not at, looking. Don't look at. It stars. Uh, now, by the way, I watched this on Netflix. It's okay. available live streaming. Okay. Um, uh, it stars Olivia Wilde. Oh, wow. Jake Johnson from New Girl. And let's be cops. I know what you're talking about. And I saw it in theaters, Drinking Buddies. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anna Kendrick and Ron Livingston. I yep. have to drive you all the way you back home? You have to drive me home. This is amazing. I have to drive you all the way back home. Oh, my God. I just cost oh. myself a tank of gas. Never underestimate JTE Oh, my things. gosh. I, saw- I thought for sure no one in the world would have seen Drinking Buddies, no. a low-rated comedy drama. Mm-hmm. On Netflix. Wow. Yeah, and I'll tell you why I saw it. Uh, I live in near Pasadena, yeah. right outside of Pasadena, and there's a little art house theater right near my place, and I saw the trailer for it, and I listen, I'll, I'll, I'll watch Olivia Wilde for as long as you uh, want me to watch. Great. And Jason Sudeikis' wife, yep. One of my favorite films a couple years ago was Safety Not Guaranteed. Love Safety Not Guaranteed. St- Jake, Jake Johnson. Jake Johnson. Yep. So with those two in it, and I liked the trailer. I mm. won Saturday. I, I had nothing they to do. It. I went and watched it, and... <sighs> A very interesting movie, and I'm glad you guys are. I'm glad we're about to bring this up now because this is a hard. Most movies, I will actually get into spoilers, and maybe yeah. towards the end we will. But because this movie is available on Netflix, and not a lot of people have seen it, yeah. and I totally understand why you would have thought maybe I didn't see it because you <laughs> yes. are now the only person I know that has seen this. Yes. Besides me. Yes. Um, wow. So let me just. I want your first reaction. What did you think of this movie? Because I know you love relationship films. Uh huh. Let me tell you. 
I actually really liked this movie. I'm right there with you, buddy. I really, really liked this movie. You're right. I do like relationship movies. I do like romantic comedies in a way, not the watered-down versions in the late 90s Mm -hmm. on. Uh, My Best Friend's Wedding is probably the last big corporate romantic comedy I enjoyed, and I do enjoy My Best Friend's Wedding. Um, Being a Harry Met Sally fan, of course, I have to love the genre. But this, this is not a romantic comedy. It really is, and that surprised me a little bit, but in yeah. a good way. And you've got, when you've got uh, Anna Kendrick and, mm-hmm. and Jake Johnson, not that they're attached to comedy, but they're very, I think, comedy-capable actors. Olivia Wilde is, yep. I think, too. And look, she's, she's now with Jason Sudeikis, and he's in this film, and Jason Sudeikis is funny. And I'm yeah. a big fan of Ron Livingston going back to Swingers and beyond. Yeah, and he, I he loved him. killed it in Boardwalk Empire mm-hmm. two seasons ago. Love Livingston. So... I Let had it real yeah. quick. Andy Sudeikis, he it's a very it's basically Jason Sudeikis. Jason Sudeikis, what I say? Andy Sudeikis, Andy. <laughs> his cousin. Jason, uh, Jason Sudeikis is so he's just kind of it's shoehorned a in the movie. It's, it's a, a cameo. cameo. It's, and you know why he's there? He he's probably married to Mary Lou the Wild. Yeah. Maybe some name recognition. I don't know if he had any kind of. I'm look, trying to look at the credits. Uh, Joe Swanberg is the writer director. Mm-hmm. Um, and one interesting thing I think I liked about this movie it's a it's an improv movie. There's no script to this movie. Oh, it's and kind of a mumblecore. It's a mumblecore type of film. I did which, not know that. Which means I'm surprised the Duplass brothers aren't involved. Yeah, I was going to say. Um, and he, I just saw a recent one with him, uh, a romantic comedy. It's kind of a, a, a romantic dramedy that Duplass is in. It's oh, yeah? uh, the one I love. I saw that in theaters also. I saw that, right? Yep. Weird one. We could talk about that. That's a weird I, I saw that about a month ago. Uh, didn't Had a mixed feeling about that one. I agree. Here's why I like Drinking Buddies. Uh, the, the I'll read the synopsis. It's uh, it's about Luke and Kate are co-workers at a brewery who spend their nights drinking and flirting heavily. One weekend away together with their significant others proves who really belongs together and who doesn't. It's a, it's a uh, I'm with this woman, but I want to be with that woman. I'm with this guy. I want to be with this this guy uh, type of thing, which I think we've all been into in life. Sometimes sometimes you meet someone and you're already attached to someone, and you're thinking, "Ooh, did I choose wrong?" It's a question, fair question to ask. This movie asks that question. Again, we won't give the answer that yeah. the movie's on a journey, but it is because it's improv. And no, more improv movies are mostly attached to some of my all time favorite comedies Spinal Tap, Waiting for Guffman, Love Best in Show, um, all those movies. Um, uh, first of all, let me just say, I'm my, surprised. A Mighty Wind. Yeah. I'm surprised the hero is improv. I did not know that. Yeah. And if you did not tell me, I would not have guessed that. Well, I, as I was wa- I didn't know I was watching it, but when you're watching it, you can kind of tell the scene. And it was edited great. Yeah. I don't know if Swanberg edited it. Uh, as well. He, I'm sure he had an editor involved. You can look that up. But I think the editing was so good. It, at times I was like, huh, I wonder if maybe they're just letting him go off script. But but according to the notes that it, much like a full-on improv movies mm-hmm. or, or episode of Kirby Enthusiasm, there was yep. uh, uh, an outline and then the actors were told to kind of get into character. And I'm reading some, uh, I'm on IMDb, of course, looking at some of the trivia. Uh, they so didn't know what they were doing. You know, Livingston showed up to a set one day and was uh, and was like, hey, you're doing the breakup scene. And he, oh, had, really? he had to ask, wow. with, with whom? <laughs> I don't know like which one. It's kind of they're just yeah. going on to tell just, They don't know. What a perfect way to start your <laughs> Seriously, and the d- director Joe did actually edit the film. Also, he did. Directed, well, wrote, and edited. Joe Swanberg, and uh, you should find him on Twitter, and you should tweet him because Joe Swanberg, I think you've made a great movie. Yeah. Um, what I liked, but I'll cut to the core. I'm rambling. Like, what I liked about it, I've given you the, the setup. Mm-hmm. It was handled so realistically because of the mumblecore improv type thing. Mm-hmm. I felt I was, I was, I, f- I felt uncomfortable at times. Mm-hmm. I felt happy. I felt the, oh, I've been there. It was like a good Ryan Adams song. Not Brian, Ryan. It was a good Ryan Adams song where you, you feel like you're at the bar lonely with whiskey with these people, or you feel like you're confused yeah, with you f- these people. You feel like these people could easily be friends of yours yes. in the same yes. situation. And one thing, I, just like you said, what I really enjoyed about this film was the realistic aspect. Mm-hmm. I was like, this is a realistic look at relationships yeah. and you know, romance and friendship. Mm-hmm. And it was really refreshing because, like you mentioned, when Harry met Sally, mm-hmm. in some ways this movie is exploring kind of the same thing, yep. but in a more mumblecore realistic yep. style. Uh, less, co- it is funny, but I wouldn't call it like a straight up comedy. No, and that's the thing: the, the comedy, you know, the comedy because it's not designed to be comedic. Mm-hmm. The comedy comes out of the characters, which is the basis of any good comedy. It's yep. it's not jokes. That's why I'm not a huge. You know, dumb and dumber type guy. Um, mm. I it, not that I don't like some of that stuff. I, there's, I, there's something about Mary is my favorite Farley Brothers movie because I thought funny. it had a heart to it. Yep. Uh, and characters I could relate to. But this movie, they do such a good job of 
You don't know where it's going, and you don't know who you're rooting for. There's no good guy, bad guy in this totally relationship. Agree. Olivia Wilde is not a she's not a character who's just easily written down on paper. No. Uh, she really has a lot of different dimensions to her. And one minute you're kind of with her, and some <coughs> moments you're just kind of like, what's she doing? Oh, as a character? Yeah. Yes. Yes, a- absolutely. And what I think in Olivia Wilde, too, and you've seen her um, – Comes into the into the Hollywood scene as as this very gorgeous woman. Of oh, course. she started off. Tron was the first movie yeah, I remember. And gorgeous like, woman, oh God, and 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 look, sometimes women and men who are gorgeous are pigeonholed into that category. Mm-hmm. So what I loved uh, Olivia Wilde's career lately, and, and and you know again when she te- teams up with Sudeikis, but that that must mean behind the scenes she must be pretty damn funny too, uh, unless yeah. unless Sudeikis likes serious women, but. <laughs> And I loved watching her kind of just be a normal person in this movie. And n- at no point were they trying to sell you that this was an impossibly gorgeous woman. Yeah. I also, let me also say, I found the relationship between Anna Kendrick and Jake Johnson very refreshing, too. Because mm-hmm. she wasn't just like some uh, girlfriend who didn't get him or was mm-hmm. like, you know, some of these movies, they want to like make you take one side with the couple. Yes. This movie, they didn't really do that. While yes. she does, and very early in the movie, she makes some mistakes. Mm-hmm. And some things that happen snowball to other effects. Yeah. But they, again, I come back to that word realistic. All these characters felt very realistic. Nothing felt like it was written out for a Hollywood screenplay. There's a scene, there's a scene in the movie where uh, Jake Johnson's character, Luke, uh, comes home and, and stuff has gone in their relationships mm-hmm. and everything. And she's just sitting there doing like a little model set painting. Okay. And he kind of comes home and hey, you want to you want to get some dinner or whatever whatever the scene is. And mm-hmm. it's such a simple scene, and it's it's just seemed like I was watching Anna Kendrick and Jake Johnson date. Yeah, and they did such a good. And I love Anna Kendrick too. And what I she she made that joke in that Super Bowl parody commercial she did a few years ago about you know she's like I'm attractive, but I'm like I'm the hot girl in your improv troupe attractive. <laughs> okay, I I, I, I I get that. I think she's a gorgeous woman as well. Yeah. But I but I get what she's saying. She's an, an accessible girl next door quality to her. And mm-hmm. in this movie, it really plays to her advantage as a character because she you j- you get why he would have been attracted to her in the beginning. Mm-hmm. It's not a, that she's she's not some shrew. She's not some you know uh, bad woman yeah. character totally who 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 they set up to be. Oh, mm-hmm. see you you're rooting against her. She's a good woman. She's yeah. a good person. Good skills. Well rounded character. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and all four of these characters, Livingston of all of them is maybe the character you see the least. Yeah, he's definitely this. Yeah. He's definitely the co star. If there are three or more of the yeah. stars. Yeah. Um, so his character, if there's going to be one person cast a little bit as a bad guy, sometimes I thought he was it. Okay. But even then. Yeah. It not wasn't. really. Not really. Even then, not really. I also love not just the fact that you explore the relationship between like the couples, but can you be best friends with a girl? And everyone, you know, whenever you're best friends mm-hmm. with a girl, everyone's mm-hmm. like, why? There's always that. Why didn't you two ever get together? I live it. Yeah, I live you it. Live it? I live it. You know, okay. you know, one of my best yeah. friends is is Megan Finley, who I mentioned. Yeah. Uh, I legally have to mention on every podcast I'm on. Yeah. I get that all the time. I just went and had I just went and had tacos with her husband yesterday. Okay, and we laugh about it. Okay, um, but their relationship allows for me to be close friends with yeah. her. So, but um, you know, going back ten years ago when her mm-hmm. and I met, it was it was kind of one of these situations. Like it, it it was mm-hmm. messed up and a little and a little uh, you know. Tough. We had to overcome some things to become friends. So, yeah. so I look at that and draw my experiences to look at this movie. I can see why you like this movie. Yeah, <laughs> you totally related to this. Well, yeah, you know. And again, yeah. you, who, again, who hasn't been in that situation? I, I've been in. I was in a happy three and a half year relationship and never crossed any lines, mm-hmm. despite the fact that she lived out of state for a year and a half of the last year and a half of the relationship. But it, you know, I'd meet girls all the time, and it's, you, you you think, well, I'm around them a lot. It's working. I'm flirting. Uh, I like it. Like maybe yeah. this is maybe grass is greener on the other side, and this <laughs> this movie really really realistically, I the whole time I'm I didn't know I'm like I don't know who I would choose. Yeah, and I remember coming out of this movie and thinking, the main word I want to say is refreshing, mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. if this mm-hmm. was any Hollywood produced movie that was not independent film, oh, it would have yeah. been such a cookie cutter. It would have been uh, <laughs> what, what are those movies? Uh, I talked about it on the, <laughs> the my Knapsack Files podcast with Stacey Howard and Mark Riley. The the no strings attached. Yes, uh, any, any exactly. Buddy, but friends mm-hmm. or whatever the hell those movies are. It would have ended with some song and dance number, <laughs> yeah. um, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but uh, no, this this movie it ends on a on one of those 
oh, that's the ending movie exactly. moment. It, it, but it's like, not quite like The Hobbit, uh, Desolation of Smaug. Yeah. What have we done? Uh, it's it's just a great realistic ending. Not everything gets tied up in a nice pretty bow at yeah. the end of this movie. Like it life, it just kind of ends it doesn't. Op- a little bit open, which the way I think is... Yeah, it's refreshing, yeah. and I like it, seeing the film. It, a more cinematic version of it is the ending to Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Yeah, okay. Which I love because it was so realistic, and it's mm-hmm. the, that last scene, as hyper realized that movie was, it's one of my favorite last scenes of a romantic uh, relationship movie is Eternal um, Sunshine, and this had it too. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about the performances. Uh, I'm really happy Olivia Wilde did this because this yeah. is one of the best movies I've seen her act. Yep. I mean, she does a lot of these big budget. Mm-hmm. Some com- she's done some comedies, but this is the first film where I really felt like she had a chance to show her acting chops a little bit. I absolutely agree, and like I said, it, 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 she's a gorgeous woman. It, it, I can bring that up in conversation, yeah. but in this movie, I never once thought that, yeah, she because was, it wasn't about that. It was about this character who's a, a small business owner mm-hmm. who's um, a, a, trying to find her way through through love and life and is a perf- competent, competent professional. Mm-hmm. She's kind of the grown up professional of the of the group here in, totally in a right. way um, but she's still got to struggle with some her heart and her emotions and, and she has some flame out moments and <laughs> yeah. and um, I thought a, a great stand up for herself speech um, I love that scene actually I really yeah. liked it because you bought into it um, well let's talk about the lead Jake Johnson uh, yeah. a lot of people I think I could see him being one of those actors who's a lot of people say Charlie Day just kind of plays Charlie Day in every movie. Agreed, and I love Charlie. Yeah, Day. and I love Charlie Day too. And I was I'm, I was always a little afraid Jake Johnson might just be Jake Johnson from New Girl because I do watch New Girl. I watch New Girl. It's a too. Fun show, and his character like in Safety Not Guaranteed, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. very similar. Similar. Uh, this again, similar in some ways. But again, I, did, and I didn't. I didn't see Let's Be Cops. Oh uh, yeah, he's. It's basically same. the two guys from New Girl. Okay. Well, and here's the thing. I I did. Uh, I, I'm a bit of a Zoe Deschanel fan, and I get some people don't mm-hmm. like her. Um, I get it, but I like her. And I watch New Girl. Oh, it's her show. Let me give it a yeah. go. That show's not about her. It's, it's about become an ensemble. And, yeah. and all of them have shined, mm-hmm. it made that show an ensemble themselves. They've taken it and grabbed it. Even Hannah Simone's got it on the show, too. Well, and, do you feel like this movie and, get, allowed him to stretch his yes, acting a little bit? Yes, that, because that's what it's getting to is, is Jake Johnson and Damon Wayans Jr. have become two of my favorite young male actors in, the, in this day and age. Okay. I think big things to come from, from Damon Wayans Jr. if he's given the right opportunity. And I great. think Jake Johnson's got a great leading man, uh, not leading man Clooney-esque, but leading man mm-hmm. uh, normal dude. Vibe, yeah, okay. <laughs> and you're you're as you're saying it, you're making a great point, and I'm agreeing with you. That was always kind of my fear so far is he's Jake Johnson's he, he being a Jake Johnson, even in these commercials you see with Craig Robinson yeah. and everything. Yeah. Uh, look, it's work for Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn's Vince <laughs> Vaughn. Good I'm, point. I'm looking forward to True Detective to see Vince yeah. Vaughn act again. Uh, but I love what Vince Vaughn does. Wedding Crash is one of my favorite comedies of all time. Yeah. Um, Jake Johnson, this movie is not this guy from New Girl. He's I this, think there's hints of it. There's hints, hints of, it, of it, but you can't escape that can't as an actor. You are who you are. are. Yeah, I understand. But but um, unless you're you know Daniel Day Lewis. Yeah. But um, <laughs> um, Jake Johnson in this one he plays um, and, you know new girl. He's an erotic kind of guy, and in this one he's a rolled up sleeve beard trucker hat. Guy working in a beer manufacturing plant. He's kind of a guy's guy. It's true, yeah. Going out drinking with the guys, and he's muted, quiet, and and it, towards the the end, the, the, what I mentioned, the Olivia Wilde stand up for mm-hmm. herself speech, and he's involved in that scene. He he he. The whole movie, I'm on maybe seeing things through his eyes. Okay, I I'm guess seeing. You're saying. I'm seeing the whole movie. I saw through his eyes until that scene, uh-huh. and then I didn't see him. Through his eyes anymore, and he played that very well. Suddenly, he was on the defensive. Would you should have been maybe? Would you agree in this movie? Maybe the uh, two main characters' roles are kind of um, opposite. Usually, the guy would be the role Olivia Wilde kind of played, the messed up, doesn't know what she's quite doing with her life. Mm-hmm. Whereas Jake Johnson's playing more like most mainly he's the female who's just. Kind of yeah. got our stuff together, yeah. and uh, I it's a little bit of a mix-up. Uh, it's a little bit of, yeah, 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 you're, I think you're right. It's a little bit of the, uh, and it's kind of it's reversal. good. It's kind of good. No, she mm-hmm. she uh, she owns the company yeah. that they're going. And I think mm-hmm. Sadeg is, in, is involved somehow as like an investor <laughs> yeah. or something like yep. that. Uh, and it's not about that, but um, uh, her company almost is kind of a MacGuffin at times. Um, but, yeah, it's a little bit, uh, little bit of reversal, and I think that's cool. Yeah, I totally agree. I'm bringing back that word refreshing. Mm-hmm. A very refreshing film, and I'm glad you saw it because 
Ken, you're the only, you're the only person I know that's actually seen this movie. It's, you still it's, haven't seen some of my all-time favorite movies. Still haven't seen The Godfather. Still haven't seen Ghostbusters, Gremlins, <laughs> Top Gun, Casablanca. Uh, still haven't but seen all that. Buddies. But I've seen Drinking Buddies. <laughs> right up there. And I've seen this, uh, the one I love. Yeah, and that's I've another seen, one. <laughs> I, I like, look, here's what I like doing, man. I will freeform here. I like going on uh, uh, Netflix. I have Netflix, and I'll, I love documentaries. Yeah, I, me too. I, the Los Angeles' character. I've got the Altman doctor, documentary queued up. I love uh, Ken Burns stuff. I love all that stuff. So I also kind of like finding just simple, independent, modern comedy films and seeing what it's about. And more often than not, there was one with a lot of these characters. I even think Olivia Wilde was in it, where it's like an orgy. It's like it's called Let's Have an Orgy. That's American Orgy or something like that. I think it's yeah. no, I think it's called Let's Have an Let's Orgy. Let's Have an Orgy. I'll look it up here. And <laughs> and I thought, all right, a modern sex comedy romp. Got my curiosity. Um, and I've seen that one, um, and that one to me was disappointing. Um, and I, wasn't it Sardegas in that also? Yes, I believe he was, and it was a similar crew. Uh, I don't know why it's not popping up on IMDb. Yeah, Probably because IMDb is like, no, we can't have, uh, <laughs> well, you know, this is what I love about your show. We're free form. Yep. I'm just going to go to Sudeikis' IMD pa- IMDb page. I'm just going to type in orgy and see what happens. Uh, that, you're going to get something a lot different, buddy. In <laughs> a good old-fashioned orgy. A good old-fashioned orgy. That's okay. it, I found Is that the one? Yep. Uh, we got Jason, like we said. Lake Bell. That's right. I love Lake Bell. Nick Kroll. Nick Kroll's in it. Lisley Bibb. Warren Star. Will Forte. Yeah. I love Will Forte. I don't That's see Olivia, right. though. Yeah, she's not in it. You're right. But it's similar. Martin Starr's in it. Yep. Um, Martin Starr. And that movie... Good cast. It's good cast and a weird, fun, modern kind of relationship. Mm-hmm. So, and and I, was, I was disappointed with that one. And part of it is I just didn't... Eh, it was a little too hyper-realized and a little too gotcha. fake. So I was... I had Drinking Buddies. This is a 2013 movie. I think I've had it in my queue on Netflix for eight to nine months. Oh, or really? whenever it came out. Okay. Um, and I haven't finally the other night, three nights ago, I go. said, let's do it. That's the beauty of the show, Ken. I yeah. want to talk about movies. And mm-hmm. this was a great start because this is a movie I really liked. Yeah. And I, I probably tweeted out, go see this movie. <laughs> when I saw this, and <laughs> if I had known that, yeah. <laughs> I would not have made that bet. <laughs> it's true, um, but yeah, like I said, you're the only person I know that's seen it, and this is uh, this is great. This was a great first episode. <laughs> I think JT Movie Thinks uh, is sure. going to start off with a success. <laughs> and to all of you out there who are surprised, I could uh, uh, talk about a movie for more than five minutes uh, that wasn't Star Wars. Uh, you're welcome. Yeah, and you can catch us on Netflix right now. Yeah. So do yourself a favor. Watch this movie. Uh, me and Ken both give it a thumbs up. We're both Absolutely. recommending it. Absolutely. All right. Well, Ken, thank you so much for uh, being my first guest. Uh, cool. We've got more episodes to come. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know who. <laughs> uh, you don't know whoever much. gives me a ride. <laughs> you don't know much. <laughs> but there, I'm going to be releasing these uh, just about every week, maybe twice a week if I'm lucky enough. Wow. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, do me a favor. If you're listening to this on iTunes, rate, review. Tell us, you know, and also tweet it, tweet at me at, at Schmo's JTE. Mm-hmm. Let me know you watched this movie and what you thought of it. And do the same thing to Ken. Ken, yeah. what's your Twitter? Bring me, uh, my Twitter's at Ken Knapsack. Um, tweet me and join the conversation. Uh, I'll join the conversation on this movie. Yeah, hashtag drinking buddies. Hashtag drinking buddies. <laughs> and uh, um, yeah, and then, uh, you know, don't forget to catch my own podcast in Knapsack That's Files, right. where you appeared on as well. I did. You could catch those on iTunes and uh, right, iTunes, but right now it's iTunes. On YouTube also? Uh, well, we're re-releasing right now. Um, we're releasing some encore presentations of episodes that have to that have to do with the um, um, Schmoes No main show, the movie show. Gotcha. Um, that that's what we're doing right now. So they're they're on the SK Podcast YouTube channel. Schmoes No Podcast is the actual uh, YouTube.com slash Schmoes No Podcast. <laughs> Great delivery. All right, guys. uh, Thank you for listening, and uh, keep thinking about those movies. 